Just sit there and make sure no one steals anything. We might get some early trick-or-treaters, but just keep the door locked. We get all sorts this time of year. Everything locks automatically, though. Keys are in the safe. I'll see you in the morning. Welcome to Mernhaven's Unsolved Mysteries. Tonight, we'll be trying to solve the murder of Mernhaven's most famous artist, Mordecai Gray, brutally murdered in his loft last year, on the night of All Hallows Eve. Gray had been painting six portraitures at the time. They were all suspects, according to Justice Hoon, but Hoon was unable to convict any of them. Could there still be a killer on the loose? Was it Dominic Serum, the lush burlesque dancer? Or Otto Pipistrel, our now famously cancelled ventriloquist? Or perhaps Lilith Rendell, the island's only undertaker? Gray was also painting Sunday Finch, our twinless tennis star, Xavier Hahn the reclusive clockmaker, and finally, Vice Justice Catherine Myers. Perhaps Justice Hoon was covering up for his understudy. We have all the juicy details coming up, but before we discuss those murderous muses, let's delve into the mind of a killer by retracing their footsteps on that fateful day. Welcome to Gallery Argenta. I'm Jamie, your jovial art museum information educator. Push my buttons and see how I respond. Better known as her alter ego, Miss Moonstruck, talented dancer Dominique Serrant regularly performs her bewitching blend of ballet and burlesque at the Moonstruck Lounge. At one time set for stardom on the West End stage, Dominique's path took an unexpected turn due to a tragic death in the family, but London's loss soon became Merle Haven's gain. As the last remaining funeral director on the island, Lilith Rendell ferries Merlehaven's souls to their final destination. Angel to the bereaved, she comforts those left behind, whilst pioneering carbon-neutral cremations and burials using compostable coffins.
Otto and Pip are Merle Haven's most famous comedy duo, having secured Best Comedic Performance for three years running at the prestigious Golden Orc Awards. Pip also has his own solo career, which includes a best-selling children's book and a cartoon series based on the Pip is Hip universe. Professor Catherine Myers is Merle Haven's current Vice Justice, serving under Justice Hoon, and is directly responsible for maintaining criminal laws and rehabilitating offenders. She's also the mastermind behind Merle Haven Manor, the island's only penitentiary, allowing offenders to rehabilitate closer to home instead of being sent overseas. Sunday and Monday, Merle Haven's most remarkable twins, were already well known as the miracle test tube daughters of geneticists Goddard and Constance Finch. But they found fame in their own right on the tennis court, quickly becoming the world's youngest and most memorable doubles champions. Perfectionist surgeon turned clockmaker Xavier Hahn is Merle Haven's most in demand artisan. He took a small hiatus when his mother died last year, and more recently after divorcing his wife Caroline. But his reclusiveness and rare output has made him more in demand than ever. During an excavation of the Henge in 2011, a hive of secret passageways and rooms was found running all the way to the Aurora Woods and beyond. This giant crystal ball is one of the few artefacts recovered during the dig, and due to the ban on all paraphernalia of divination, is now safely homed at Gallery Argenta. Don't try to see anything in it. That would be illegal. Native to Merle Haven, the wild boar is generally harmless, though sometimes still hunted for sport. It's a frowned-upon activity that the Triumvirate continuously consider banning, and Grey was against the hunt too. His painting aimed to bring more eyes onto their plight. During the freak fish storm of 1976, the first mayor of Merle Haven was hit on the head by majesty, breaking his neck and ending his reign for good. Some scholars believe the fish storm was caused by a Concorde flight from England, whilst others point to a more sinister ceremony near the Henge. Either way, Mayor Spens sleeps with the fishes now. Generally recognised as one of Mordecai Gray's more whimsical pieces, this painting depicts Marie's farm in 1975, when farmer Marie Abernathy claimed she woke up to find all her chickens were levitating, as if lifted by an invisible hand. Unsurprisingly, Marie's story was met with ridicule, with some blaming it on the work of a poultry geist, while others called for an exorcist. The Henge is a rock formation that was allegedly home to the last ill-fated Great Orc before being consumed by the founding fishes. The distance and angle of each stone also correlates with the Fibonacci sequence, which spiritual people believe affords it a great focus of power.
Mulhaven Island was discovered in 1953 by crab fishermen who'd sailed too far out of the wash. The island was populated by many great orc, even though they had been declared extinct over a hundred years before. These penguin-like creatures are still celebrated in Merlehaven's annual Orc Festival. This was the last painting from Gray's dream period, and the last piece he worked on before the six portraits that preceded his death. Doorways are said to represent passages and the transition from one life to the next. Notably, Gray was recorded saying that he'd passed through a gateway through which he could not return. Merlehaven welcomes people of all religions, and today, Merlehaven Chapel is at the heart of the community, hosting weddings, burials, and ceremonies that mark the quarter and cross-quarter moons. Mordecai frequented the chapel as a child, up until his mother died. On the 16th of April 1953, the crew of a fishing trawler first discovered Merlehaven Island. This day would come to be known as Merlehaven Day, the island's birthday, and every year it's celebrated with the arrival of the Orc Fair. Saviour's bell was originally sounded to warn islanders of trouble at sea, but its ringing soon became synonymous with drownings instead. Gray's painting depicts Saviour's Bell in action at Merlehaven Docks, but it was dismantled in 1975 when it was acquired by Gallery Argenta. Despite its removal, some say they can still hear its doleful chimes on stormy nights. Fabled Great Orc was originally thought to be extinct when the last specimens were killed in 1844 on Eldi, off the coast of Iceland. But they reappeared in 1953 along with Merlehaven itself. Sadly, for the remaining Orc, they were hunted to extinction again by the crab fishermen who settled here. Steve Stewart famously transported the dead in a distinctive blue station wagon until a macabre car accident in 1992 robbed him of his life and his head. Since then, several sightings of a decapitated man driving a blue hearse have given rise to the legend of the headless hearseman. Originally an unorganised burial ground for the first settlers, the plot was turned into the largest solitary graveyard on the island, with thousands of headstones honouring the dead. Only Merlehaven residents with pre-booked plots can be buried here now. Now a spectacle for tourists, Merlehaven's coal mines were operational for over two decades before being shut down. Mallow coal is exclusive to Merlehaven, a type of coal that is spongy to the touch and burns brighter and longer than hard coal. However, 
The life expectancy of a Mallow coal miner was around two years, and because of this, mining was made illegal in 1975. I'm Higgins, and I stopped questioning why or how this place existed a long time ago. I've updated the recordings with the truth for your listening pleasure. Dominique Serrat was a rare triple threat, a dancer, singer, and actor whose talents burned so bright that she landed the lead role in a West End musical as a complete unknown. No longer would she be a nobody from a nowhere island. Dominique was destined for greatness, and she couldn't wait to leave her past behind. Or at least, that's what she thought. News of her dad's sudden illness forced Dominique to abandon her musical just one week before opening night. Furious, the director promised she'd never work on the West End stage again. Once back in Millhaven, Dominique did her best to nurse her ailing dad, but soon suffered the pain of losing him, alongside the death of her dreams. Rising from the ashes of grief like a corseted phoenix from the flames, Dominique found her calling, performing burlesque at a local bar. She set pulses racing with her daring act under the watchful eye of her boss, Leo McIntosh. But all was not well, as patrons of the Moonstruck Lounge suffered a string of mysterious thefts, with the perpetrator appearing to use Miss Moonstruck's show as a convenient distraction. After a preposterously short courtship, Dominique accepted a marriage proposal from dull and dependable English teacher Adam Taylor. But that love-blind fool couldn't satisfy her insatiable needs. Desperate to break out of her rut, Dominique flung herself into the arms of her boss, a move that was only slightly less reckless than attempting to extort money from Mordecai Gray. Adam dumped Dominique for cheating with Leo. Leo fired Dominique for stealing. Dominique blamed Mordecai for everything. Especially for reneging on a deal that would have made her rich. But then, where did his diamond orc go? With love turned to hate, and the flames of passion well and truly stamped out, our tragic Dominique was left with nothing to cling to but an audition in Paris and one final fragile shot at redemption. Did she really think Mordecai was behind it all? Dominique, the 
burlesque ballerina. Whilst it seemed like everything was against her, I think we all know Dominique only had herself to blame. Business took a turn for the worse after Lilith's parents died. She set about honouring their name by discrediting the Johnsons, her only competition on the island. After breaking into their mortuary and removing various body parts from the deceased, word spread like the plague, and soon Rendell's was the only undertaker in town again. Ever the entrepreneur, Lilith invested in partnerships to produce lab-grown meat from human DNA and was working with Merlehaven's butcher to release a range of celebrity cuts. However, adding an option for customers to feast on their recently deceased was not going to go down well. Worn down by the stream of grieving bereaved, Lilith came up with an infallible plan to cheer customers up by spiking their drinks with tetrahydrocannabinol. It was a short-term fix, and Lilith wanted more, so she made a deal with Mordecai, who provided her with a cocktail that was unashamedly permanent. When Mordecai found out Lilith had been tucking into her guests, he threatened to spill her secrets unless she supplied him with bodies. So, under duress, she agreed. Mordecai reasoned he simply wanted to paint still life, but she suspected he had more sinister plans for the cadavers. How much further would Lilith go to protect them and her secrets? Lilith Rendell ate up everyone and everything that got in her way. If you knew her real secret, you'd be as good as dead. But on the bright side, she'd handle everything for you. Otto's parents lived a marriage of convenience, neither content nor alone. But as the years went by, Mr. Pipistrel's indiscretions became more frequent and public, like the arguments that followed. A teenage Otto, sheltered in his room, and having too much time and imagination on his hands, created Pip, a best friend he could talk to whilst his parents' relationship self-destructed. Otto and Pip's comedy duets were an overnight success, bringing tours abroad and lonely nights on the road. Following in his father's footsteps, Otto drank too much and courted too many, which culminated in an overdosed and pregnant fan in his hotel room. Once Layla's story broke, Otto became a pariah, but Pip came out unscathed. After Layla, Otto vowed never to drink again and entered rehab for one last time. When he emerged, he found an inbox littered with job offers for Pip, but none for himself. Desperate for money, he pimped out Pip on his own, but companies used other voice actors to portray him. With Otto's personal legacy in ruins, he hit the stage again, but without alcohol or Pip to back him up. This time, 
the critics were not so kind. Her. He would fall in love with her, and she would fall in love with him. Or at least appear to. A devout fan of his solitary stand-up show, she would marry him if he would give up Pip. And so Pip was sold to the highest bidder, Mordecai Gray. From that day onwards, Otto would never see a penny more from his puppet, and Mordecai would own his most treasured companion. Smitten with her, Otto struck a deal with Mordecai to paint a portrait of his fiancée, but profited from it without her knowledge. She would leave him after that, and Otto would never really know why, but he did know that Mordecai had taken everything that was dear to him. All he had left now was nothing but regret, remorse, and revenge. Otto Pipistrel, a drunken womanizer who became increasingly jealous of the puppet he'd created. A puppet that had outgrown its master and was pulling its own strings. Catherine's parents were killed when she was just 13. They'd gone out to buy Christmas wrapping paper, only to be shot multiple times in the post office by an armed robber who was never found. She studied law to seek ways to avenge her parents, and it almost worked. Catherine had too much power at her disposal as Vice Justice, and managed to rubber stamp her own Recreational Rehabilitation Act in 2017. This allowed Justice Hoon to decide what constituted a penitentiary on Merlehaven, and Catherine quickly offered her own Merlehaven Manor as such, allowing her to deal with criminals as she saw fit. Catherine was so proud of Merlehaven Manor that when she opened it up to the public, she only expected people to see how happy all the patients were. But one reporter, Kim Park, uncovered a different narrative. One of electrocution, starvation, sleep deprivation, and hypnosis. Not unexpectedly, Kim became the first overseas addition to the manor when she was arrested for littering. Since then, she has had nothing but praise for Catherine and her methods. Mordecai himself was incarcerated at Merlehaven Manor for painting a mural on Merlehaven's lighthouse. It wasn't really a mural, though, was it? Anyway, I digress. He served several weeks for criminal damage and was finally released once completely in Catherine's thrall. But her control was short-lived. After visiting the undulating hills, Grey returned a changed man with no memory of his time at the manor, or the hypnotic trigger words Catherine had implanted in him. Lux Iris was formed by the Founding Triumvirate to protect themselves from the spirit world, but in doing so they created a group of powerful spiritualists they feared even more. So the Lux Iris headed underground, and anonymity preserved their existence, but Mordecai was about to change all that. Free from Catherine's hypnotic control, Grey threatened to tell the world Professor Myers was High Priestess of the Luxiris cult, and that her prison rollout was just the beginning of her world domination plans. Vice Justice Catherine Myers, 
a narcissistic megalomaniac who thrives on controlling others. Fortunately, Mordecai managed to shake off her spell. Sunday and Monday's story began in a lab. Two babies, carried by two different mothers, generated from a single egg, the world's first human clones. Birthed in secret and growing up under the watchful eye of their parents and other geneticists, the twins developed a devoted and unshakable bond. Boosted by private lessons from world-class coaches and a genuine love of tennis, Sunday and Monday's natural talent quickly shone through. The twins dominated in every tournament, quickly rising up the ranks against older and more experienced players. The twins' ambition were frustrated as Monday's unexplained health issues interfered more and more with her ability to play. Weakened and growing more sickly by the day, Monday encouraged her sister to compete in a singles tournament without her. While Sunday began to imagine what her career might look like without Monday by her side. Reeling from the death of her sister, Sunday uncovered the truth about the twins' true origins. That they were the last in a series of failed experiments by scientists masquerading as parents. Although they'd fled, she would consider forgiving them if they grew her a replacement sibling. However, she still believed Monday's death was all Mordecai's fault despite her own backhander. Would killing him put her own demons to rest? Sunday and Monday Finch? Spoiled brats whose names were almost as pretentious as they were? They thought they were so perfect, but they were born with fatal flaws. Always the perfectionist, Xavier's slow and steady hand killed more patients in surgery and paid out more fees in negligence than any other doctor in Merlehaven. Fortunately, Nurse Caroline, who was employed by his mother, collected enough evidence to have him struck off the medical register before he could do any more harm. Xavier turned to clockmaking after being outcast from surgery and was taught his craft by the heavenly Kyoko, whom he had never had the guts to tell his true feelings to. Kyoko was last seen being driven to the docks by Nurse Caroline, and I think we all know how that trip ended. Rich and controlling, Xavier's mother had been paying Nurse Caroline to look after her son. And not just in maternal ways. It had been easy to manipulate his former years by telling him he had von Willebrand's disease and diabetes. But as her dementia kicked in, she saw him as a threat and paid her daughter-in-law to murder him. That didn't quite go to plan, though. Mm -hmm. 
Xavier killed his mother. Then Caroline tried to kill him. Sorry, she tried to self-defense him. Xavier didn't buy it, of course, so Caroline offered to take the blame for his mother's death to prove how much she loved him. As long as he'd cut her into the inheritance he'd receive if he wasn't implicated. <laughs> That's how love works on Merlehaven. Miraculously cured of his illnesses, Xavier began to question the strength of Mordecai's power and their deal. His only conclusion could be that the most famous, most beloved artist of Merlehaven, Mordecai Gray, was the Devil Incarnate. He believed Mordecai killed one of the other muses with a haunted clock he'd made years before. But was that really the truth? Or was Xavier just seeing things? Again. Xavier Hahn hardly finished anything he started. His mother hated him, his wife tried to kill him, and like a smitten schoolboy, he fell in love with his teacher. Argento opens it up to the public. I get to choose most of the exhibits myself. Well, I pick a handful and then she picks from those, but same difference. As far as I know, the Argentas were a family of jewellery makers. The paintings were added once it was open to the public. Oh, actually, I'm not sure how many Argenta pieces we have anymore. Most of them were sold or returned. There was a display case somewhere with the Argenta work in, but, uh, maybe it's gone? There is one octagonal hidden room. I don't know where it is, and I don't want to know. Allegedly, it was used for sacrifices when the place was owned by a cult leader some hundred years ago. Don't look into it. It's icky. Hmm. Higgins said he was having strange dreams at the beginning. What type of dreams? I don't want to know. Just, if it starts to affect your work, then maybe see a doctor. I'm useless at these kind of things. How did you know about Higgins? Wait, did I tell you? Yeah, it was probably me. Higgins was the security guard for six months before you arrived. He was our sixth guard, actually. His address was 6 St. Catherine's Court, Maidstone. 666. Six, six. I'm having an epiphany. I'll be right back. <laughs> Higgins was, um, seeing things. Things that weren't there. Hallucinations. He'd often point in the middle of a wall and say there was a room behind it. I think it was probably the sledgehammer incident that got him fired. Oh, uh, sorry, quit. Not fired. Uh, I've said too much. Miss Argenta did fire Higgins. 
then agreed to accept his resignation for his CV. On his last night, he started smashing through the corridors, looking for these hidden rooms that he expected to find. Mainly, he just found the grass outside. It caused a lot of damage. <sighs> no, they don't. What you're talking about is more likely psychometry. I felt the same thing when I was working the night shift. I could pick up a painting and it would show me a memory of itself. Perhaps it's really strong in you and you think that you can see it. Don't freak out. Stop touching the paintings. Uh... There is no restoration table. Miss Argenta is very particular about that. She doesn't want any modifications being made to any of the pieces. If you find any artwork that looks like it's been tampered with, you let me know, okay? I think you're probably dreaming. Have you caught yourself asleep during your shift? I won't say anything, but Miss Argenta would not be happy. Not that she comes in, ever. Get some rest. You'll be fine. Mordecai Gray is the artist who was murdered last year. It's the main exhibition at the moment. I think you've probably just seen that phrase somewhere around the gallery. Yes. Very Mona Lisa. I'm sorry you're like this now, Mordecai. The hills have done things to you that can't be undone. The portal was perfect, and on the side of the lighthouse, you're so thoughtful. Let's tell people I'm your daughter, even though you're not a founding fisherman. The Starlings groomed witches. Still do. I was the last sacrifice, though. Do you know it's rained fish after they murdered me? So it's half work. They killed Spence. We need the blood of six royals. There are no royals in Merlhaven, Mordecai. You must paint them. Catherine is lost. She has become evil. Although, there is something I want from her. I'll take care of Sunday's parents before their next iteration. See that Dominique gets her money. She deserves to leave this place. I'll send Alejandra after Otto to get Pip back. You'll need to buy him. Give the Zorigami to Monday Finch. She'll die anyway. 
but this way she'll take it with her. Xavier is trapped in a prison of his own making. He is controlled by his origami. We need six of the freshly dead on Wellhaven soil. Then they can be arranged. Lilith is pure of heart, but corrupt of soul. She cannot be High Priestess. Do whatever you must. There can be no royals in the church. The bodies, the blood, the royals. Then we save Merlehaven by sending it back to where it came from. You see them too, don't you? Steve Stewart was a wheeler dealer who'd take on any job. Stuffing bodies into the back of his car was just the one he was most well known for. He was actually murdered by the Johnsons. They wanted to take over his business, so they beheaded him and made it look like an accident. No wonder his spirit's still driving around the island. From what I can tell, the catacombs under the Henge served as a safe place for the witches of Merlehaven for years. The excavation in 2011 was paid for by the Argenta family. I suppose they'd move their stuff out by then. Merlehaven is a godless place, with a religion that tries to please all faiths, adopting pieces it fancies from all of them. Ironically, the chapel wasn't very welcoming at all, and was the site of hundreds of ritual executions, that included anyone accused of witchcraft and anyone that spoke out against Mage Scrivener at the time. The drunken pirates that founded Merlehaven didn't even know what sea they were sailing in, let alone day of the week. According to geologists, they fairly accurately concluded Merlehaven's actual birthday is the 1st of February, or the 28th of November, or the 9th of December. It's definitely one of those three. Savior's Bell still gets rung by the unhappy spirits of Merlehaven, mostly witches who were drowned by the Triumvirate in the Aurora Trials. Mayor Spens ordered the bell to be destroyed, and the Triumvirate passed a law banning the paraphernalia of divination. 
They'd hoped to cover up their sins by severing all ties with the spirit world. Didn't work, did it? If you sit along the coastline of Merlehaven on the 16th of April, at around 10.30 you will see an army of ghost orcs deployed to the beach. It's the anniversary of their extinction. They know what you did, and they're not happy about it. Merlehaven doesn't have coal. Mallow coal is basically the guts of the island. It is, like they said, very powerful and supernatural. But the island wasn't very happy having its guts removed, and soon found ways to kill the miners trying to disembowel it. The mines still ooze mallow coal from time to time, where the rock face is at its weakest. The Triumvirate tried to out-and-out out ban burials decades ago, but that kicked off a revolution from grieving Merlers. So instead, they passed a law limiting the size of the burial ground and gave council aid to Merlers who cremated their relatives. If you don't fall into either of those categories, you're either buried at sea or fed to the undulating hill. Mordecai's dream period diaries are largely incomprehensible, but he often described traveling through doorways and seeing many things he was unable to describe. One such tale was of a young girl called Kyra, who insisted she was his charge even though he had no recollection of her. Merlehaven is not an island, it's a creature. There is no bottom to Merlehaven. If you dive downwards, you will see more rubber-like skin that looks the same as that which is found on the undulating hills. There's no question that Merlehaven Island is part of a sentient creature. But the problem is, nobody knows what it wants. Everyone knows Henge is used by the Luxiris cult as a summoning circle to bring forth whatever their latest fancy is. It was, however, created by a man-made explosion during the Founding Fisher's search for coal. It was actually Angel Abernathy, Marie's daughter, that caused all those chickens to levitate. Marie knew that too, because Angel had been trying to cast a scrying spell to find her lost Basset Hound, but she accidentally summoned a rather grumpy spirit instead. This wouldn't have been a problem had there not been so many witnesses, along with the Triumvirate having just criminalized all forms of divination. They ate Majesty, you know. After saving Merlehaven from Mayor Spens, Majesty was spit-roasted by the Argenta family over a campfire at the Henge. Doesn't say that in the brochure, does it? Every year, on the night before Halloween, the Triumvirate organizes a secret boar hunt as a peace tribute to the incoming wave of spirits. They will never ban boar hunting unless it looks like they might run out of boars.
Gray's killer definitely knew him. Why? Because the crime scene had no signs of forced entry or exit, and only his coveted diamond orc figurine was missing. Just as Hoon, who was deputizing at the time, surmised the killer must have used a key. How did they get that key? Hoon had two theories. Firstly, perhaps Gray had befriended one of his subjects, or was having a romantic relationship with one, and thus had given them a key. Secondly, and more plausibly, perhaps the killer had simply found Mordecai's spare key. He kept it attached to a powerful magnet, out of sight, but easily within reach, above his doorway. When I'm rich and successful, I'm going to have a giant self-portrait hanging in the foyer of my New York apartment. That's what famous people do, right? Maybe I'll let you paint me. I'm excited by the thought of my portrait hanging in the gallery. Who knows, it could be worth millions one day. I was on the cover of our West End musical, so I must have a pretty face. It was a whirlwind romance. We met at the Butterfly Park, and three weeks later we were engaged. I can't help it. I'm a hopeless romantic. I want to fall in love so completely I don't know which way is up. I can put you in touch with the locksmith, if you like. Sometimes I uh, get a murder robbery and I arrange getting the locks changed for the family. It's gone missing, you say?
Uncle Steve's the headless herseman, not me. When he died, Dad took over and changed the name from Stuart's to Rendell's. Tough times. Lots of arguments. Jenna owns marigolds. In the theatre district, she does the best flowers. We're both dressing up for Halloween. She's gonna be a sunflower and I'm thinking maybe a zombie <laughs> or a cheerleader. So, Marcy's wanting me sober, and, and generally, I need a drink, you know, for my nerves. It was six drinks. No alcohol, no show. So they kicked us out? They didn't kick us out. I, just, I was just doing them a favour. Sure you were. And have a whiskey. I got an injunction, so she can't come within 100 feet. Happens a lot. Well, it's fans. You know, they get a bit, like, tunnel visioned. You slept with her. Yeah, but some people just can't let it go. 15 times. It's not all her fault, but I mean, it does get to a certain point, and it's the only thing that you can do. He's a dick. Oh, she was stunning. Mid-twenties, in this gorgeous, tight cheerleading outfit. It's just, it's weird, but they all like me to, you know, do the voice while we're, you know, so it's like they're having sex with Pip. I mean, I should be offended, but it's still me, right? Jason hadn't been fully rehabilitated. He needed more help. He escaped into the community and <laughs> there isn't much more I'm allowed to say on the matter. There was a full investigation by the Justice Department that decided our security measures were appropriate. Blood diamonds are illegal, Mordy. Are you seriously telling me that that great orc is kosher? They went to buy wrapping paper from Jensen's and never came back. Some idiot in a balaclava was holding up the post office with a gun. They were shot several times. I was carried by a surrogate. She was a lab assistant. Paid well, but it's not the same. 
Mother says she wasn't careful enough. We're still twins though, just two peas from different pods. Of course. This isn't the first time we've posed for a portrait. Mother had one commissioned for our 10th birthday. Now it hangs in the foyer, which is delightful when prospective suitors come to visit. Those diamond animals you have lying around, they must be worth something. I remember buying a diamond once, an engagement ring. <laughs> Proposed at the beach at Bali. I thought it would warm Caroline up. It didn't. <laughs> Ambition. Desire. I wasted time. And now doth time waste me. For time hath made me his numbering clock. I'm dying, Mordecai. Ricardo Hollander. That was the last person I... killed. Accidentally, of course. Heart surgeons need to be precise, Mordecai. Incisions I made could make the difference between months or years. But it's a factory line. They want the jobs done quickly, not well. I only do perfect. Well, we never fight, do we? I always think that we were forced to spend so much time apart before we were born that we've been making up for it ever since.
Yes. You, I don't have a key. There was a spare key above the door, but that's not much use when you're locked inside. Locked inside? He liked to lock the doors when he painted me. So you knew where the spare key was? Obviously. I just told you. I had a locksmith make two keys for Mordecai and change the lock. We only found one. Well, then you've still got one to find. Do you have a key? No. Why would I? Keeps one above the doorway. You knew about the spare? Didn't everyone? I'd used it once, months ago. I mean, I'd left Pip there and needed to get him for a gig. <laughs> Did you keep the key? No. Nah. Oh, uh. Oof. Actually, now you mention it, I can't remember. Maybe I've still got it. <laughs> I asked him to lock the door during our sessions to make sure nobody could get in. That's when he told me about the spare key. Ever use it? I'm Vice Justice. I don't need a key. Doors simply open for me. Mr Gray's cleaner says that she discovered you alone inside the studio a couple of weeks before his death. Oh, yes. <laughs> I forgot about that. Monday left her coat behind. I went back to get it. How did you get in? The spare key. It wasn't hidden very well. But I was only in there a moment and I put it right back. He left me alone once in his loft, but it wasn't Halloween. Did you know about the spare key? No. Did you take the diamond figurine? No! Why would I do that? You seem agitated. Because it sounds like you think I'm a suspect. Glad to hear you survived. I'm not worried about intruders. It's the boredom that'll kill you. Three nights on, four nights off. Just two more to do and then you're done. Unless you're stuck in a time loop, playing the same three days over and over again. <laughs> Just kidding. Or am I?
Abernathy's Bluff is the most inhospitable rock face on the island, luring countless mountaineers to their death every year. Whilst potentially deadly for the people that take part in the sport, it's supplied millions of pounds worth of revenue to Merle Haven in tourism. Merlehaven is famously close to the spirit world, with many saying the fabric of the universe is stretched unnaturally thin here. Grey believed that most past inhabitants of Merlehaven were still on the island, including his mother. The Tornado del Luna is Grey's depiction of a freak tornado that occurred in 1969 just after Apollo 11 touched down on the moon. The more superstitious inhabitants of Merle Haven thought it was a sign from Mother Earth that man should not be permitted to destroy the moon as it had her. This arresting dreamscape was the second painting in Gray's dream period. Mordecai never revealed what the painting was supposed to represent, and only spoke about it in one rare interview, where he claimed that he could still hear that infernal tick, tick, tick. Controversially, some people say they can see pagan imagery in the piece. Merlehaven's picture postcard lighthouse was built soon after sailors arrived on the island and was tended by lighthouse keeper Leon Knoll for an incredible 53 years. After Leon's retirement in 2010, the lighthouse stopped working and any attempts to fix it have been in vain. Mordecai Gray appeared to have a strange fascination with the building and it appears in several of his works. No one knows who she is, but rumours abound. Mordecai's first love? His first wife? An ancestor? But why all the blood? Endearingly nicknamed the Mordecai Lisa, some say she bears a striking resemblance to his mother. Miss Argent has just called me to ask for one of the grey portraits. Just pick any one of the six and leave it in reception. It's going away to be tested for authenticity, whatever that means. I think they all look hideous, so they're probably all authentic.
See how her mysterious eyes follow you around the room? I know her name, and I'm not going to tell you. Something has changed. Real Merlers call Abernathy's bluff Lover's Muff because of all the broken hearts that leap from the precipice into the salty embrace of the sea below. A few people even get pushed. Lighthouse keeper Leon Noel jumped from the lighthouse and died a year after he'd taken up residence there. It was his spirit that kept the place alive, and it was only set free in 2010 when his ex-wife died. He originally jumped because she'd left him, and when he could sense she was close to the end, he left Merlehaven forever to be at her side. Grey went to prison for that thing. Most of Mordecai's dream works were created autonomously, channeling the will and the way of the heart of Merlehaven itself. The future is a message to the rest of the planet, showing a clock ticking in Mother Nature, superimposed with the rituals of humanity, depicted as a pentagram. It's a prediction of death by climate change. Nothing more, nothing less. It wasn't a freak tornado. Marcus J. McCleary, a famous coal miner who lasted five years in the depths, was disgruntled that people were saying the soil of the undulating hills couldn't be penetrated by anything. Using a giant mining drill, Marcus managed to dig a hole the size of a pencil tip, but it then erupted into a huge rip that spewed out the tornado before sealing itself up again. Mordecai's depiction of a spirit was commissioned as an advertising poster and postcard for the Merlehaven Center for Tourism. There's nothing remotely spooky or accurate about it. Mordecai Gray was subdued before his murder in the most devious of ways, by a debilitating injection to the neck. A toxicology report from the coroner revealed that Gray had been dosed with a near-perfect amount of ketamine, just enough to tranquilize him without inducing a heart attack. So our murderer knew exactly what they were doing. Or maybe they got lucky. Either way, Gray was thought to have staggered around for dozens of seconds until he finally lost consciousness. The method of delivery is still disputed. Uh, some reports say it was via syringe, whilst others believe it was a tranquilizer dart, such as the ones favored by boar hunters on Merlin. Uh, what does this mean for our investigation, though? Well, the murderer needed access to the drug, a syringe or dart, and perhaps some medical knowledge unless dosage is something they could easily look up on a public worldwide resource electronically.
I don't believe what they say on thermodynamics. Nothing on Merlehaven is natural. It's the same with the mines. Dad used to say he'd heard scratching noises down there. Not rats, something else. I dreamt I was dancing with a snake. One of those big yellow pythons. Adam was pleading with me to stop, but I couldn't. It felt too good. Like the snake's body was my body. And the more I danced, the stronger I got, twisting around him tighter and tighter until he was choking for breath. And then I woke up. It was his heart that gave out in the end. His lungs were so full of soot it couldn't pump hard enough. I had to give him ketamine to help him breathe. Then that made him hallucinate. He said he could hear miners trapped in the walls of his room, scratching to get out. You've got a way of getting secrets out of people, haven't you, Mordecai? Mordecai. Mordechai. Chai. <laughs> I infuse their drinks with cannabis. Makes them slightly less despondent for a while. I've never killed anyone, personally, but I could think of reasons why I might. That sounded bad, didn't it? It's pretty grim. I use these uh, spiky contact lenses that go onto their eyeballs and then it kind of grips the eyelid with little fish hooks to keep them in place. It's best not to think too much about what goes on to make the dead look normal. scared of Pip. I can't tell him, but I thought it'd be our second kiss and, and just as our lips were about to touch, she kind of recoiled and she'd seen Pip in the box behind me. I mean, I know some people will get freaked out by puppets, but not her. She kind of made some religious cross motion and she fled, like Pip was the devil or something. I need the money. He's pimping me out. They don't want me. What a surprise. I mean, do you care they're splitting us up? Divide and conquer. I guess it's a good opportunity. Yeah, for me.
It's weird, but this little dude can get squeaky in all the wrong places. <laughs> Cry me a river. It's just easier to use a syringe. And it stops getting oil everywhere. And you can mainline with it too. I need the money. He's pimping me out. I don't want me. What a surprise. I mean, do you care they're splitting us up? Divide and conquer. I guess it's a good opportunity. Yeah, for me. That's the only thing that Justice Hoon and I don't see eye to eye on. I don't think paraphernalia of divination should remain criminalised. They were extraordinary times that led to that law. It's not like the Henge. The hills sucks power from up here and drags it down there. Whereas the Henge is like a magnifying glass. It amplifies everything. He was dead, drowned in the Aurora woods. I think Jason was murdered, like your mother. Mundo dragged me to a palm reader in Argentina. This woman told us we'd be number one doubles champions within the year, though so far she's a position off. But then again, she also said our palms were different, so maybe she's not as good as she thought she was. We had a magician for our birthday party once, and Monday cried when he pulled the dove from his sleeve. She thought the poor thing had been suffocating up there the entire time. She was so upset that Mother persuaded him to let Monday keep the dove. It flew away a few days later. But I still see it in the woods sometimes. How long do doves live? We had a friend whose mum ran the pharmacy here. We used to meet at the lake and take whatever pills he'd managed to sneak out. we just lie there and look at the stars, Monday and me and him in the middle. We were both hopelessly in love with him. It was so stupid. Taking drugs is really bad for your heart.
most things supernatural can be easily explained. And if they can't, it generally means they're not true. I can understand the appeal, though. Monday loves all that stuff. She was the one that insisted we buy that Ouija board. Though note, I was the one that had to sneak it through customs. Monday's not been sleeping well at the moment. She keeps having nightmares. Father's been monitoring her brain activity, which sounds excessive, but I suppose he's just concerned. Hmm, give me a pin. I don't know. I don't care. Monday's the one that's afraid of needles. We had so many blood tests growing up. I used to do hers for her. She couldn't even look. Boxes of old rocks, photos, notebooks, needles, pills. It's all up in his old room. I know I need to get rid of it all. Some of it's pretty musty. I just don't know what to do with it. He pushed both kids over, then jumped himself. Told them that they could fly. Grief makes you do crazy things if you ignore it. Mr. Britton is in hell now. We have had a couple of casualties, but I've saved people too. I injected one widower with epinephrine. She was having a heart attack and she wouldn't respond to CPR. A lot of them give out at the funeral. I was talking to the coroner's assistant about an autopsy. Shanice, she kept complaining it was too cold in the mall to work. But before we could finish our conversation, another assistant turned up, pulled out a gurney that had Shanice on it. She'd died a day before. I was talking to myself. It's pretty grim. I use these uh, spiky contact lenses that go onto their eyeballs and then it kind of grips the eyelid with little fish hooks to keep them in place. It's best not to think too much about what goes on to make the dead look normal. I feel Leo's eyes on me all night, so later, when he was closing up, I went back out on stage and put on a private show just for him. Thank you.
it's a long process, but you get into the rhythm of it. Lots of pipes going everywhere, draining things, and then you pump in the formaldehyde. If you're a mortician, you can't be too squeamish. So, I've been working on some card tricks. It's called credit card fraud. I was wondering if you might draw something for me on a card. <laughs> like a phone number? Ashley, yeah. Can I have your phone number? <laughs> been in hospital a few times. Normally, palpitations. <laughs> Just take whatever anxiety cocktail they offer me and... Head off to the stage. <laughs> Performing arts, man. It's a killer. Some say it's a protection spell. We have a little ceremony at the Henge each Halloween to stop... Well, you know about Majesty, the fish that killed the mayor? I don't take any medication at all. Mind over matter. We've got everything under the sun at the manor, though. Our patients are trying to overcome all sorts of addictions. Miss Darcy preyed on young men in bars, took them home and cut out their hearts. She said she'd been hypnotised by Mr Darcy from the TV <laughs> and that every time Mr Darcy said the word love in her dreams, it was a trigger for her to find her next victim. Seven bodies, six months for each. He was dead, drowned in the Aurora woods. I think Jason was murdered, like your mother. I didn't give her any drugs. She just, just intentionally OD'd. I was off my face as per usual, but I did call for an ambulance, but. She was dead when they arrived. I've been in rehab. I'm cutting out the drink for good this time. Thank you.
Yes! I've been reading up on you, Mordecai Gray. Your paintings are worth thousands, tens of thousands. You've got connections all around the world. I want to make a deal. Mrs. Marshall wanted to see her husband's body before it had been fully prepared. She begged to do it herself, so I left for a while. But then when I came back, the body had gone. Allegedly, she taxidermied him, stood him in her hallway. I mean, honestly, if you want to pay for it, you can have it. Do you use people's blood in all your paintings? You really don't remember being a patient at the manor for defacing public property? The lighthouse? You don't remember any of it. Well, you don't need both of us here for the painting anyway. I can pretend to be her. Let's see, she would sit like this. Oh, Sunday, can you fetch my cardigan? I'm so cold. Was that mean? That sounded mean, didn't it? So, you administered the ketamine yourself, or did a doctor do it? They showed me how much to give him, but I couldn't do it. I see. I returned it all to the pharmacy, about a week before Halloween. You can check with them. It was all there. We'll do that. Ketamine is something I neither want nor have access to. Possession of cannabis, though? Yeah, and I already told you why I had that. You found it in a corpse. Yes. Ketamine is not my thing. Why are you asking? Is that what was used on Mordecai? I was prescribed ketamine in tablet form. Why are you specifying tablets? Because I assume it was a liquid form used on Mordecai. How do you know that? Well, because you can't inject tablets. How do you know it was injected? Well, I don't know, because force-feeding in tablets sounds silly. I'm sure you already know there's ketamine at the manor. Do you have access to it? I have a key, yes. Anything gone missing recently? I don't know. I'd have to check. Your parents recently obtained ketamine via the pharmacy. Do you know why? Well, you'd have to ask them. But they sometimes use animals as test subjects. Perhaps they needed to anaesthetize them. Do you know where they keep it? In the lab, I presume, in our basement. So you could have access to it if you wanted. 
if I wanted, but I didn't. There is actually another room in the gallery that was built over. P you only need to patrol the parts that you can get into. Don't go knocking down walls. And be extra vigilant tonight. They've reopened Grey's murder case and I've got a bad feeling about it. I'll talk to you tomorrow. The Merlehaven Butterfly Park and Centre for Tourism is on the north coast of the island and is home to over 2,000 exotic butterflies from all over the world. Merlehaven has its own unique butterfly species too, a merlefly, which resembles a red admiral but with asymmetrical markings on its wings. The loop depicts the main road encircling Merle Haven that runs around the island and back again in the shape of a Mobius strip. Gray said that if you stand still for long enough on the loop, you'll meet everyone on the island. Gray's painting of the Aurora Woods is often compared to Edvard Munch's The Scream for the curvature they share. But Merlehaven residents have noticed another pattern. For them, the Aurora Woods is sister to the undulating hills, and they do share physical borders. A staple of popular folklore, the so-called Butcher of Merle Haven was the villain of many tales of missing pets, vanished children, and cannibalism. The island's modern-day butcher, however, takes a more cosmopolitan approach and has recently begun working with a lab that offers synthesized meat. One surprising fact in Merle Haven's natural history is the dramatic increase in starlings populating the island. Numbers of these iridescent birds have massively declined on the UK mainland, yet Merle Haven seems to attract more and more every day, leading to several spectacular and prophetic murmurations. What magic power does the island hold over these birds? Thank you. 
Mulhaven is still a major fishing venue, and its shores offer plentiful supplies, enough to keep the whole island fed for years. The docks pictured here are built on the very same site the original settlers landed. Hey, um, could you set aside a couple of Gray's portraits for me, please? Just leave them in reception. One of them's gonna be going on a permanent vacation, so uh, don't pick your favourites. Thanks. I'm a bit disappointed you didn't leave a portrait out for me. Perhaps you forgot? I've picked one anyway. I hope it wasn't your favourite. Maybe you can help me out next time? Okay. If you're lucky, you might be able to convince a helicopter pilot to land in some unmarked grassy knoll to pick you up. But since there's no airport on the island, the only way in or out is through this ungodly dock. Merlhaven is mostly surrounded by sharp, gangly underwater protuberances, and the dock is where fewest are found but they still take out the odd ship or two. Starlings are Earth's spiritual guardians that often migrate to places where immense evil is brewing. In Merlhaven's case, they're gathering on the very creature that rose out of the ocean almost 70 years ago. What do they know that we don't? Find the crystal ball. The Butcher of Merlhaven has always been one of the most respected inhabitants, with that title being passed down generationally and still unsullied. The current owners are the Milgrims, and their family crest motto is Eat the Rich, which sounds pretty fair, considering the state of the world today. The Aurora Woods really do scream. Allegedly, due to their strange molecular structure, they let out an unpleasant shrieking sound each time they are hit by an axe. I think it's more to do with all the drownings they've seen. Either way, I'd use a chainsaw. Our drunken crab-fishing forefathers couldn't build a road in a straight line, hence the loop. The Butterfly Park is incandescently beautiful with its water fountains and Art Nouveau sculptures, and the most wonderful place to relax. That is, until you realize that the Merlefly is actually carnivorous, like the Feniseca Tarquinius, and enjoys gnawing on its bedfellows.
Why did you paint a doorway on the lighthouse? You're not Banksy. There's already a door on the lighthouse. It didn't need another one. You say the hills changed you, but in a good way? I've dealt with patients who have been to the undulating hills. It cooks them, turns their insides hard. You can travel to the mainland and knock yourself out with New Age stuff, but divination has been illegal here for decades. You know what they say about the spirit world and Merlehaven? That's why it's banned. You say the hills changed you. But in a good way? I've dealt with patients who have been to the undulating hills. It cooks them, turns their insides hard. Blood magic is illegal on Melhaven as is all divination. So if that's what you're doing, you need to stop. Oh, and also, just stop. Why would you do that? You might need some kind of help, Mordecai. I use 40 mils of ketamine per bore. Some of them can weigh around 100 kilograms, and that knocks them out for about 15 minutes without stopping their hearts. It's common practice in murder investigations to hide certain details from the press and public so that if anyone comes forward to confess, they can quickly be ruled out. For the murder of Mordecai Gray, 
Justice Hoon decided to leave out one very important detail indeed. A symbol that had been drawn on Grey's forehead in blood. According to Merlehaven mythos, the symbol belonged to the Luxiris cult, who believes spirits can tangibly interact with our world. Cult members secretly recognize each other semantically by pairing two colors together whilst talking, like purple-blue sky, to alert others of their presence. The symbol drawn on grey was a warding spell, meant to stop spirits returning in corporeal form. However, it had been drawn incorrectly and could instead trap a spirit in the material world. Our murderer must have known about that symbol and how to use it, albeit not entirely accurately. He was having an affair, which drove his wife to suicide. She couldn't ignore it anymore, so he basically killed his whole family one way or another. Mr. Britton, music teacher and marriage advocate. Don't you just hate blackmailers? Tell people what you want. You don't have any proof. I'll tell them you've been stealing and abusing bodies from my morgue. I think Caroline left her bank statements lying around because she wanted to be found out. You could clearly see the payments from Mother. 
It wasn't the payments, though. It was the reports documenting my every move. Violating. She wouldn't have been jealous. It's not in her nature. She could have come with me to every match. She could have cheered me on from the player's box. And when I won, it would have been like we both won. All I know is that she was getting better before I gave her that clock. You told me it would make her better. You cheated me. I'm number 27. There were 26 failed experiments before us. I saw the bodies. The fetuses all scrunched up in pickle jars. Some of the clones were adolescents. How long have they been doing this? And how, how old were they supposed to be? Who am I supposed to be? Justice Hoon lost his marbles years ago can barely form a sentence. I've been the head of justice all this time. And it's very efficient. If I need a new law, I simply pass one. I asked them for different wrapping paper. We hadn't run out. I killed my parents. patience. I even love you. But please, tell me what drew you to the undulating hills. Don't you just hate blackmailers? Tell people what you want. I don't have any proof. I'll tell them you've been stealing and abusing bodies from my morgue. She'd stabbed me a lot. I was bleeding out, but she just couldn't kill me. She knew she was going to be in trouble, so 
we were just haggling about how much. It's over with the butcher. I get that people aren't comfortable yet eating their dead. But if we have the stem cells, Grandma never has to leave the table. Nobody will believe you. What will you tell them? <laughs> that the Vice Justice is correcting people in her correctional facility. People don't care how it's done. They just want it to be done. Benz is my mother's maiden name. My grandfather was Mayor Rickman Spence. I do not agree with his politics. He tried to drown my grandmother in the Aurora trials too. I think Caroline left her bank statements lying around because she wanted to be found out. You could clearly see the payments from Mother. It wasn't the payments though. It was the reports documenting my every move. Violating. What do you mean you're donating it to the Orc Society? For free? What's 50% of nothing, Mordecai? What am I supposed to do now? Leo's fired me. I've got nothing. Please, Mordecai, don't screw me over. I found a letter from the company that hired him. They did warn him. He was only supposed to be down there a few hours, and yet he was down there for days. He ignored the warnings. Why would he do that? Adam said he loved me, but I couldn't feel anything, like I was behind glass. Now he won't even talk to me at all. I was bluffing. No one would have believed me anyway. You're a celebrated artist. You have all the power. Who am I? You put the diamond orc in my bag. Why would you do that? 
They emptied everything out when they accused me of stealing. No, 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 no. Wait, no. Leo must have it. Leo must have it. This is better not be a joke, Mordecai. I'm going to check now. You stay here. Maybe making bad decisions is in my blood. Did I ever tell you why my mum left? She got knocked up by a fisherman. Literally ran off with a sailor, or at least tried to. Their boat capsized, so I still see her around town sometimes with their church friends. The island didn't let her leave either. Mum used to draw these weird symbols on the mortuary walls. She said it was to ward off evil spirits. I'm not sure it works. I suppose I could add some uh, special mints to the meat buckets at the butcher's. Wait, why are you encouraging me, Mordecai? You'd love that, wouldn't you? How did my blood look in the painting? It dries kind of brown. So I'm hoping you mixed it with something else. All I know is that she was getting better before I gave her that clock. You told me it would make her better. You cheated me. Don't be so ignorant. Jason wasn't killing people. He was possessed by Mayor Spens. Spens hated Millhaven so went on a killing spree in Jason's body and then drowned his vessel. There was a sharp part on the front of that clock. I didn't realize when I gave it to her. It was only a tiny drop of blood, but that clock drank it. Well, Maudie, they say when you make a deal with the devil, you have to sign it in blood. So where's the contract? Surgeons can't be squeamish, Mordecai. I'm fine with the sight of blood. Whoever's it may be.
Mother and father are two of the greatest scientific minds in the world, so I'll never understand why they collect things associated with the occult. It's not just books. The whole house is full of strange objects. I know it won't be her exactly. But I don't want to be on my own. They can make her new again. I think my dad brought something with him back from the mines. Something that's scratching in the walls. I'm never going to get off this rock. I thought it was something he'd seen in the mines, but Leo's got the same symbol tattooed on his shoulder. When I asked him about it, he said he just liked the design. But then, why would pages and pages of my dad's notebooks be covered in them? Why were you at the bar, Mordecai? I don't remember seeing you, but you're on the security footage. And you went through my bag. Did you plant those things? Is this some kind of revenge? I'm High Priestess, Mordecai. You're a member of the church too, but you've been brainwashed by the hills. If you try to blackmail me again, though, there will be grave consequences. There's a living tomb of Luxiris symbols. I've documented around 200 already. Many of them need orc blood to be performed, though, which perhaps explains why they're extinct now. A lot of people joke it's to improve tourism. And I don't like to talk about it because people say I'm baked all the time, but I can see them in the mortuary. They tell me their stories, but I pretend to ignore them. Like Mr. Britton.
The twin. She's dead, isn't she? And you gave her my clock. I'm not interested in posing for you today. I came here to give you one last chance to explain yourself. Who are you, Mordecai? Did you kill that girl? The marks on Caroline's pace lips were identical to the ones on Mother's letters. She paid her to spy, to love, to try to kill her son. I said she wasn't well towards the end. Yes! I'm not really cult material. They're generally overdressed for me. You know, all the robes. But you've seen the symbol before. It's funny. Once you've seen it, you start noticing it everywhere. It's all over the island, hidden in plain sight. Can you draw it? I've got it tattooed. Yeah. Yeah, I have seen that symbol before. It's, uh... It's a spirit warding spell. Would you know how to draw it? Mum drew these in the mortuary all the time, so... Yeah, I could give it a go. Want me to do it now? It's a warding spell. What's it for? It prevents spirits remaining here after death. How do you know that? Education. So you know how to draw this? Yes. So you also know it's wrong? What? No. Let me see it again. Ever heard of the Church of Luxiris? No. What about this symbol? Have you seen this before? No, sorry. You're sure? I'm sure. That's a lovely dress you're wearing. What, uh, what colour is that? Green. May I go now? I've heard of it. The greeny-blue symbols. Is that what you mean? The Luxiris cult. Are you a member, Mr. Hahn? It's not a cult. It's a church. Thank you, Mr. Hahn.
I told you I don't have a key. There was a spare key above the door, but that's not much use when you're locked inside. Locked inside? He liked to lock the doors when he painted me. So you knew where the spare key was? Obviously. I just told you. So, you administered the ketamine yourself? Or did a doctor do it? And they showed me how much to give him, but I couldn't do it. I see. I returned it all to the pharmacy about a week before Halloween. You can check with them. It was all there. We'll do that. I'm not really cult material. They're generally overdressed for me. You know, all the robes. But you've seen the symbol before. It's funny. Once you've seen it, you start noticing it everywhere. It's all over the island, hidden in plain sight. Can you draw it? I've got it tattooed. I told you I don't have a... I had a locksmith make two keys for Mordecai and change the lock. We only found one. Well, then you've still got one to find. Do you have a key? No. Why would I? He keeps one above the doorway. You knew about the spare? Didn't everyone? Ketamine is something I neither want nor have access to. Possession of cannabis, though? Yeah, and I already told you why I had that. You found it in a corpse. Yes. Ketamine is not my thing. Why are you asking? Is that what was used on Mordecai? Yeah. Yeah, I have seen that symbol before. It's a... Uh, it's a spirit warding spell. Would you know how to draw it? Mum drew these in the mortuary all the time, so... Yeah, I could give it a go. Want me to do it now? I'd used it once, months ago. I mean, I'd left Pip there and needed to get him for a gig. <laughs> Did you keep the key? Nah. Oh, uh, oof, Actually, now you mention it, I can't remember. Maybe I've still got it. <laughs> I was prescribed ketamine in tablet form. Why are you specifying tablets? I assume it was a liquid form used on Mordecai. How do you know that? Well, because you can't inject tablets. How do you know it was injected? Well, I don't know, because force-feeding in tablets sounds silly. I asked him to lock the door during our sessions to make sure nobody could get in. That's when he told me about the spare key. 
ever use it? I'm Vice Justice. I don't need a key. Doors simply open for me. I'm sure you already know there's ketamine at the manor. Do you have access to it? I have a key, yes. Anything gone missing recently? I don't know. I'd have to check. It's a warding spell. What's it for? It prevents spirits remaining here after death. How do you know that? Education. So you know how to draw this? Yes. So you also know it's wrong? What? No. Let me see it again. Mr. Gray's cleaner says that she discovered you alone inside the studio a couple of weeks before his death. Oh, yes. <laughs> I forgot about that. Monday left her coat behind. I went back to get it. How did you get in? The spare key. It wasn't hidden very well. But I was only in there a moment and I put it right back. Your parents recently obtained ketamine via the pharmacy. Do you know why? Well, you'd have to ask them. But they sometimes use animals as test subjects. Perhaps they needed to anaesthetize them. Do you know where they keep it? In the lab, I presume, in our basement. So you could have access to it if you wanted. If I wanted, but I didn't. Ever heard of the Church of Luxiris? No. What about this symbol? Have you seen this before? No, sorry. You're sure? I'm sure. That's a lovely dress you're wearing. What, uh, what colour is that? Green. May I go now? He left me alone once in his loft, but it wasn't Halloween. Did you know about the spare key? No. Did you take the diamond figurine? No! Why would I do that? You seem agitated. Because it sounds like you think I'm a suspect. I've used ketamine for hunting in the past. Do you know how much to administer to knock someone out? Yes. I used to be a surgeon. That's not a crime, is it? Would we find any in your house if we looked? You'll need a warrant. I've heard of it. The greeny-blue symbols. Is that what you mean? The Luxiris cult. Are you a member, Mr. Hahn? It's not a cult, it's a church. Thank you, Mr. Hahn. He left me alone once in his loft, but it wasn't Halloween. Did you know about the spare key? No. Did you take the diamond figurine? No! Why would I do that? You seem agitated. Because it sounds like you think I'm a suspect. Oh no! 
I've used ketamine for hunting in the past. Do you know how much to administer to knock someone out? Yes. I used to be a surgeon. That's not a crime, is it? Would we find any in your house if we looked? You'll need a warrant. Yes. I've heard of it. The greeny blue symbols. Is that what you mean? The Luxiris cult. Are you a member, Mr. Hahn? It's not a cult, it's a church. Thank you, Mr. Hahn. Yes! I think your timings are slightly off. I didn't kill him. Someone got there before me. Dead men can't talk, Maudie. Now, be a good boy and put your head back for me. That's it. That's it. Well, that's it for the Grey Exhibition. Time to pack up the paintings until next year. I wonder if they'll ever solve his murder. Probably not. Anyway, you better head off. Unless you want to do some overtime?